I'm Dr. Pamela Ruig, Extension Milk Quality Veterinarian for the University of Wisconsin-Madison. We're continuing with our series on the seven habits of the highly successful milking routines. Previously in this series, we've discussed the goals and background of the milking routine. We've introduced the first habit. That habit is that cows are calm and clean before milking. And today we're discussing habit two, cows are grouped. The purpose of grouping cattle is really to ensure that we can produce high quality milk without transmitting mastitis pathogens amongst the cows. Now if you're watching this video, I'm sure you're interested in dairy cattle and you're thinking about the numerous nutritional and reproductive management reasons that we group cattle. But there are other reasons to group cattle and one of the most important reasons is to reduce exposure of healthy cows to milk that originates from infected cows. Now the reason that we group cows to reduce exposure to potentially infected milk is to reduce this contagious transmission of mastitis pathogens. When we think about the potential for contagious transmission, we have to recognize that the reservoir of some mastitis pathogen is the udder of other subclinically infected cattle. Transmission of these contagious mastitis pathogens occurs when the teats of healthy cows come in contact with milk that originated from the udder of an infected cow. Usually we can recognize these potentially infected cows because these are the cows that have long-term chronic mastitis infections. Now, there's some typical organisms that we worry about and that um, when they're present on the farm that you'd want to consider having a grouping program during milking. The organisms that typically result in long-term chronic infections would be organisms like Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus agalactia, Mycoplasma bovis, many of the environmental streptococci, some strains of Klebsiella, and potentially other chronic subclinical infections that cause mastitis in dairy cattle. When we talk about reducing exposure to other infected cows, the greatest risk factor for any individual farm is the percentage of herd mates, other cows in the herd, that are subclinically infected with other mastitis pathogens. Therefore, one of the most important steps when we think about grouping to control mastitis is having a method to diagnose subclinical infections. Well, usually you use the somatic cell count sheet, the monthly somatic cell count values, and lists like the chronic cow list that identifies cows that have high cell counts for two or more months are often useful. I'll refer you to our earlier video videos on both subclinical mastitis and dealing with chronic cows for more information about identification and dealing with these chronically infected cows. But today what we're talking about is reducing the risk that these chronically infected cows will infect other cattle in the herd and cause an even bigger or ongoing mastitis problem in your herd. And what we recommend is that one of the strategies we can use is to change your housing and milking order in order to reduce the possibility that the teats of the healthy cows come into contact with milk that originated from an infected cows. So what we're really the purpose that we're looking at is to milk the healthiest cows first and um, in order to do that we've got to make sure we identify the cows that are a risk to their herd mates. When we look at grouping as part of our seven habits of a highly successful milking routine, what we're really looking at is a risk reduction program. And the amount of effort that needs to be done on your individual farm relative to reducing risk depends on the degree of a subclinical mastitis problem you have on your farm and also depends on your individual milk quality goals. As a thumb rule, if your bulk tank somatic cell count is routinely greater than 250,000 cells per ml, you probably could get some redu reductions in the new infection rate by reevaluating your milking order and grouping of your cows. Now, some farms, if you have a relatively small problem, 
may be successful in simply segregating the worst cows. You could identify your chronically infected, high somatic cell count cows, put them in a separate pen, and milk them last. On other farms, for example, if your bulk tank cell count was greater than 400,000 cells per mil, you'd need to develop a comprehensive program to regroup and reorder milking for all the cows on the herd. When we introduce a grouping program or segregation program as part of our milk quality program on our farms, the first thing we have to recognize is that there's different types of cattle present within the herd. And we have to recognize that there's different priorities for those animals relative to milking order. The most important animals to keep healthy and away from potentially infected milk are animals like these first lactation animals who have no history of ever being infected. Those animals we'd always want to milk first. Another priority would be animals like this good old girl, where we got a healthy cow who has always had a history of having a very low somatic cell count. When we think about milking order, the next uh, least risky group of animals are animals that maybe had a high somatic cell count in their previous lactation, they were dry treated, they came back in, their cell count is low, and we really don't have any history of high cell count or isolation of any chronic mastitis pathogens. Those cattle would be milked next. Finally, the most dangerous group of cattle that we have on our herds are chronically infected cows, cows with infections caused by Staph aureus or another long-term subclinical pathogen. And in those instances, we often need a pen like this, a segregation pen where we can house those cattle separately and milk them last. This pen, for example, is simple to set up. It's just set up with gates. It holds eight cows, and these eight cows are then milked last, and the milking equipment is washed after that group is milked, so there's no chance for the milk from these cows to infect other cows. All right, let me just summarize. The goal of a grouping program to improve milk quality is to identify and milk first the healthy cows that have no evidence of subclinical mastitis infections. Secondly, we'd milk the cows of unknown status or older cows. And then finally, we would milk last the cows that we know are a threat to infecting other cows in the herd. Now, if you have a smaller tie stall operation, you can accomplish the same thing by simply ordering the way that the cows stand in your barn or the way that you move around the barn with a milking unit. So the same thing can be accomplished very easily regardless of the type of milking facility that you have. In this series, we've been discussing the seven habits of highly effective milking routines. We started off in our first episode discussing the goals and the background for why having an effective milking routine is important. In our first habit of the highly effective milking routines, we talked about the things that happen outside of the barn, keeping cows calm and clean before they enter the milking parlor. And today we're finishing up the things that happen before we enter the milking parlor by discussing grouping cattle to minimize the chance of transmission of contagious pathogens. Remember, we need to identify subclinically infected cattle, we need to know what our pathogens are, and we need to make sure we minimize the risk of developing new infections. In our next episode, we're going to move into the milking parlor and discuss the third habit of highly effective milking routines, having a consistent pre-milking cow preparation. important animals to keep healthy and free of infection are the heifers. 
that have just calved and, and are CMT negative. Those animals should be separate from potentially infected cattle. <laughs> and milk first. <laughs> the most important animals to keep um, free of the potential for infection are the healthy heifers. <laughs> the next group of animals that we consider to be the next highest level of risk would be animals who... <laughs> All right, we'll try this. Uh